How is it going everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you how to create some simple and easy 3D assets that you can use in any of your designs. In the video I'm going to be showing you how to create a quite a basic composition like the one that you can see on the screen right now and we're going to be working on three programs today. We're going to be jumping into Adobe Illustrator initially to create the actual object file so the 3D file that we're going to be creating. Uh, then we're going to import that into Adobe Dimension which will render the actual object file out with materials, light and etc and then finally putting it all together on Photoshop. You will need an active Creative Cloud subscription to access all three of those uh, programs, but hopefully you should have those anyway if you're kind of getting serious with design. It's not too bad if you've got a student subscription, it's quite cheap, but I would definitely recommend you getting that as the programs in the Creative Cloud subscription itself are amazing and you get access to all of them. So yeah, it's quite a simple process, but you know, it might take you a few goes to understand it fully, but then obviously from then on, you can kind of experiment with whatever objects you create on Illustrator and materials that you can find on Dimension. And I know that you can buy more materials and actual 3D objects out there that you could potentially import into the program itself as well. And obviously, if, if you enjoy the video, please do leave a like and a comment. And if you would like to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe. Well, let's get into Illustrator. So now that we're in Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to quickly explain to you guys what we're going to be doing whilst we are here. Um, we're going to be creating the basic 3D object with the Illustrator 3D function that you've got, which does actually create some pretty nice results, but we kind of want to experiment further and make it even better with exporting it and then importing it obviously into Adobe Dimension. So moving on, the first thing that I did when I was creating the kind of the pattern shown uh, to you previously, I've literally just traced this top section of the Man City badge, which is just this little flag on the ship itself. And I just used the pen tool very, very quickly to kind of trace this shape. And then that's basically how I created it. Obviously I've blown it up um, just let's move this out of the way. And then this is basically what I've come up with. So now again, I've shown this in the past with some of my tutorials, we're going to use a distortion technique transform uh, to kind of create this little rounded pattern or a bit more harsh like this with it going smaller. And in the end, we kind of want to end up with something like this. So now that you've got your flag shape, what I did, I've kept it just a little bit away from everything, just so you've got enough space to play around with. You want to go into distort and transform, and then you go into transform. And I think four copies of the actual object itself will be quite nice. And I'm going to do 80% of scale as you're kind of moving further away, uh, going down kind of like the angle essentially. Now moving this horizontally, horizontally, sorry, and vertically, we're going to kind of play around with the angle of the shape maybe something like this and create a bit more of a well an angled composition really maybe I tweak this a little bit more and play around with the angle until you get something like maybe like this yeah that kind of works so essentially the same sort of thing that you've got going on here now that you've got this obviously as you can see you've only got one object highlighted so what i usually do i just shift and alt and kind of drag this to the side. Obviously you can just do uh, Control and C to copy it, but then just so I've got this kind of master object as you can kind of go back into this uh, and you can kind of experiment with it as you can see further. So if you move the actual object itself, it will kind of mirror in the objects that you've kind of replicated moving on. But now going into the object that you copied, you just want to go into object and expand appearance just so you've got a, basically a set, a rasterized, object essentially which is what you're going to need to create a 3d object so now if you don't have the 3d panel kind of uh, in your sidebar here you just need to go into window and 3d and materials which will make it pop up um, on your screen essentially and then just drag it into the sidebar if you want so very basically what we're going to do make sure you've got the object highlighted you want to go into extrude which kind of creates straight away a 3d effect i usually work with like a light gray as lighting can be a little bit funny sometimes and if it's a plain white object you might not pick up on some of the edges uh, but that's fine and now you kind of just want to experiment with the kind of the direction and how you want the shape to look finally so what i usually do i create a little bit of depth and i also taper the object slightly sometimes just to create a bit more of a, a different effect essentially so if we do maybe a tape of 84% kind of move it around a little bit it doesn't necessarily matter the angle of the actual object itself as you can actually change that in Adobe Dimension so don't worry about this too much I just want to kind of make sure that I don't have too much depth on the objects themselves 
and maybe let's taper it even more and then make the depth slightly less and do like 78% taper. So you've got an object like this essentially, which is pretty close to what I did here. You know, it's quite easy. You can literally create anything you want with this. You can play around with different settings here. You can introduce bevels as well, which will obviously just bevel all the objects and create a nice little, well, a bevel around the edges. There's loads of different options that you can play around with. It's literally how creative you can get here. I know Adobe Dimension isn't necessarily the most uh, kind of very advanced program for 3D, I'd say. Obviously, Blender, Cinema 4D are programs that you really want to get into if you're doing 3D properly. But if you're creating small assets really quickly uh, for your designs, I think that Dimension and Illustrator is a great combination of programs to use. You know, it creates some really nice effects and you can get some cool looking stuff. But I'm going to turn off the bezel for now. And we're going to stick with this now again if you don't have this already this little export um asset export option on the sidebar again you just need to go into here and press asset export and literally all you need to do you want to grab this little object that you've got going on here drag it into the sidebar here and you want to make sure that you've got object selected uh, and now you can export it so i'm just going to export it into this this folder here um, and it will create automatically an object folder that you've got going on uh, and you literally just press select folder and it's been exported. So now that we've got this sorted, let's jump into Adobe Dimension. So now that we are in Adobe Dimension, what you wanna start off with is literally just creating a new blank workspace and you're gonna be taken to the screen. So you've got your basic kind of 3D work area uh, in the main section of the screen. You've got some little properties, property bars similar to kind of all other Adobe programs on the side. And then you've got your assets uh, kind of bar on the left, which has some 3D models that you can import. You can literally just drag in whatever you kind of want to play around with and you can buy or download more of these uh, on the internet and then you've got a kind of a toolbar with all the materials that you've got going on here which is great there's tons of stuff on here so i think they've added even more since i've actually used this last which is amazing as uh, dimension has actually had an update i think yesterday or the day before that uh, so i think there's even more stuff in here now which makes it even better to be honest but now that you've got this open you want to start off by creating a camera so now that you can see you've got this area which will basically render out when you go to obviously render the object itself what i usually kind of work with is like 3000 pixels by 3000 uh, it kind of helps to create a very high resolution object that you can kind of zoom into uh, when you're in photoshop if you're working on quite high resolution kind of um, canvases you don't really want to be creating objects that are kind of below 1000 pixels really as that is going to create some sort of um pixelation if you want to blow it up even more or like zoom into certain parts of it it will be a little bit pixelated so i kind of go off 3000 by 3000 it's quite a good size and now you've got this kind of bounding box of what's going to be shown when you are rendering it out so now you basically just want to go into the folder that you've exported your object file and you just want to drag it into the workspace here you just want to leave it as it is and just press import and then you've got your object right here so what i usually do uh, I drag this object way up so that you can't really see the floor underneath as shadows will actually be exported into the Photoshop file that you create at the end of this and we don't really want that. We want a clear, kind of clean um, object by itself. So you can literally just play around and move the object itself with these little bars here and you just kind of move around of um, kind of the overall area with the scroll button on your mouse you just press that in and you can move out and um, basically just move everything about you're not moving the actual object itself you're moving kind of the viewpoint and the camera and then if you want to right click and hold you can kind of twist it kind of to your liking really so something like this I think would be quite cool which kind of creates a nice spread and you can kind of fit everything into your viewpoint you kind of want to leave little bits on the side just so you've got a little bit of room when you export this so it's not touching the sides and you're not cutting off any of the objects but honestly this is very very basic what we're doing right now there's tons of stuff that you can create here you can put some custom text you can import other objects create kind of a little bit more of a scene with like a floor or a backdrop behind the actual object itself it is a little bit limited but there's still quite a few things that you can do with this so now that we've got the object in here i actually used a transparent oh yeah they've definitely added um, a few extra materials in here which is amazing but i've added a transparent um material onto this which i think it was beer so now if you want to drag this out 
it creates this kind of effect, which is see-through, as you can see, and it reflects light really, really nicely. So we're just gonna stick with this, move it probably somewhere like here. And now that we've got the asset itself, you can see around here, you can kind of go in, go into the individual bits of the composition, but I think this might have not been the right one. Let me just double check as it has been changed. But as long as it's transparent, I don't think it should really matter. Uh, and obviously with the coloring as well, you can change that in Photoshop later anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. But if you want to go into the um, the actual environment itself, you can kind of play around with the reflection, kind of the light as well. You can whack up the light intensity and the rotation of the light as well. So you kind of want to make sure it's hitting the front a little bit. So if you put it like here, um, but we're going to be adding an environment light anyway with this kind of studios 80s horror and you literally just want to drag it onto this as well and it creates more of an environment as you can see this really cool kind of effect so it adds these additional kind of lights and reflections i don't think it's actually hitting it too much um which is a little bit tricky but if you want to just why is this being weird now I've, I don't actually know where my object is, which is brilliant, but it is right here. Okay, so I've zoomed out way too much, which is brilliant, but we're getting there. So yeah, you kind of want to go back in and make sure that the light is reflecting in a way that you're happy with, kind of. I'm not 100% happy with the actual material itself, so if I just... I'm just going to double check where potentially there is a bit more of a, a see-through effect that we could find as I think the one that I used previously it was something to do with like oil or something like that and it, it created more of a, a nicer see-through effect but maybe oh there we go so we've got some nice translucent maybe a satin Trash glass, clear plastic, maybe clear plastic, that might work quite well. Let's just drag that on and see what we can kind of come up with. There we go. So that's quite cool. And you kind of create something like this and maybe bring in an additional light. So let's go into environment lights as well and kind of create a circle light. So intensity, again, you kind of want to play around with this, see what your kind of happy with just so it hits it a little bit more and brings out some of the details you can preview the um, the render itself i think if you do ray tracing let's see if yeah there we go so this kind of previews that actually looks pretty good uh, this previews what the render is going to look like obviously not in as much detail as when you would actually render it out but it does quite a good job so now that we're happy with this, I'm going to turn this off as it obviously takes a little bit more time. But now that you're happy with this, I'm pretty happy with it. You basically just go into this render setting up here. You want to make sure that you've got the format set to Photoshop as then it will create an actual Photoshop file that you can go into and you can get rid of the background and kind of just export the actual object itself. Um, I am going to check on the ray tracing render of GPU. Obviously, this depends on what kind of computer you've got and how good your computer is. Uh, my graphics card is okay, so I'm going to just render with the GPU. And I'm going to go on preset, maybe high. Let's just go with high for now. And yeah, you want to denoise it, displacement, you want to tick all this, and you want to select full resolution so you've got as many pixels basically on your design as you can. So you've got the highest possible resolution when you're importing into Photoshop. Uh, but now I'm going to let this render and then I'm going to meet you guys back in Photoshop when this is done. So now that the object has been rendered out in Adobe Dimension, I have opened it on Photoshop and basically this is what you should have when you are rendering it, rendering it out as a Photoshop file. You should have some of these additional layers which you're not going to really need, so you want to just hide them. And you're going to have a rendered image which has been denoised, which is your final kind of render in really high quality and obviously with no noise. And you should also get two background kind of... Um, image backdrop layers you just want to tick both of them off and you can see you've got a transparent uh, design now finally 
What I usually do, I just press Ctrl J to duplicate this actual layer. I hide the one underneath and I just turn this into a smart object so you can kind of play around with the scale of it and you can add some effects onto it without kind of damaging the actual layer itself. So now you want to press Ctrl C just to copy this layer and then you want to go into your final design, which is this Doku design as an example here. And you just want to press Ctrl V just to paste it in, press yes, and you should get the actual layer itself. So I'm just going to try and copy the composition that I had going on as best as I can as obviously it is slightly different but it is what it is so I'm going to tick off the 3D and you can see it creates this really cool transparent looking uh, pattern I think this one is slightly lighter than what I had uh, originally when I added the additional light but you can kind of play around with the actual settings on dimension with that kind of live ray tracing view that you've got going on uh, just so you can kind of see how light the actual 3D asset is going to be and if you want to play with it anymore or decrease the light or add any additional lights like I did. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to show you what I did with my previous one, which is this just really cool blue and gold composition. So initially the design looked a little bit like this. Uh, it was very like pink, purpley and orange, similar to the one that we obviously created. Uh, a little bit darker and obviously it reflected the actual scene that we had going on Adobe Dimension but then I applied some basic kind of camera raw settings which I think one was just a very basic human saturation layer as you can see colorize it just so it's the, the same basically as the Man City Blue so 202, 78 and plus 6 for the settings here and then I also applied a camera raw filter which was just a little bit of clarity just to kind of make those shadows and contrast pop a bit more just so it's not as flat and this is what I turned out with. And then the final thing that I did was a hue and saturation layer just for alternating light, well, lightning bolts, but obviously we know it's the flag from the ship. Uh, but I just created a very basic hue and saturation colorized layer kind of to replicate again, the kind of the gold from the badge. And that was basically it. You can kind of really create whatever you want with this. And then obviously add uh, any kind of glows or anything like that into the design itself. Obviously I've, I've added a little bit of a glow in the middle and uh, obviously it reflects on the 3D object itself. And then I added a couple of kind of glow effects on top of uh, Doku as well, just to kind of make it seem as if it's glowing from the lightning bolt just behind him. And, uh, and then I added a final kind of brightness and contrast layer in the middle here, just to kind of make it pop even more. But for the actual tutorial, this is kind of it. Obviously experiment with whatever you really want on Dimension. You can kind of go as far as you can with well depending on what you create on adobe illustrator really you can create anything that you really want you can just stick to adobe illustrator as well just to create the 3d effect it's not as cool and as in depth as dimension but if you're just starting out and you want to play around with some basic compositions you can just do it on illustrator first drag into photoshop and you can kind of play around with it and, until you're happy with it and then maybe potentially even drag it into dimension itself and see kind of what you come up with but yeah if you enjoyed the video obviously do leave a like and a comment and if you want to see more of my content please make sure to subscribe as i think 75 percent of my uh watches are actually subscribed so it would mean a lot to me uh, if you did press that button as i think now we have gone over 3,000 subscribers which is mental um the support on the channel has been insane this year and yeah we're going to be gunning for that 5k hopefully by the end of the year and we'll see what happens but yeah Another video will be out, I think, within a week of this one going live as I'm trying to kind of batch record just so I've got a few videos kind of uh, hanging back just so I can consistently post them. But yeah, obviously, if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and a comment and I will see you guys in the next one.